Hello everybody, I am Dr. Manish Gupta, Professor in Department of MMI AMSR. The case we are presenting here is congenital bilateral coronal atresia. You can sh sh uh, see in the axial section the bony atletic plate on both sides. Then a radio opaque dye was also injected into the nasal cavity which was shown held up. It's taken up for transnasal endoscopic uh, recanalization of the coronal atresia both sides. This is uh, showing a left nasal cavity atresia part. It was hard bony. Then the view from the right side again you are seeing uh, you can't enter the nasopharynx. The septum and the lateral wall are showing a atresia. First with the help of a uh, unipolar cautery, uh, suction cautery was done and uh, mucosa denuded. Then the bone was punctured with a steady pressure from the suction. The entry into the nasopharynx was achieved. You can see the air bubble coming. Finally the perforation was dilated. Intermittently medicated uh, ribbon gauze or the uh, neurosurgical patties were placed so as to achieve hemostasis. Same procedure on the right side, cauterization of the mucosa and then uh, canalization. Since the child was just four days old, there was limitation in uh, the endoscope, which was 4 mm, going into the nasal cavity, and the use of micro debrider was not possible. We planned for a binostral approach, where we had not only just dilated the respective corner, but uh, done a posterior septectomy, so that uh, we can have a binostral approach. From one, we introduced the debrider, and the, from the other, we introduced the endoscope. This also helped uh, in giving a rectangular corner uh, which has less chances of restenosis while two circular corner will ha are having higher chances of stenosis. This is accurate being used on the right side corner removing the posterior bony septum and uh, the bony lateral wall. This is the view into the nasopharynx from the right side. The mucosal cut edges were finally again cauterized because we didn't plan for any repacking of the nose. The stents were placed both sides of the nasal cavity. Same procedure on the left side. Some role of mucosal flaps and their preservation has been expla explained in theory, but it was difficult in this uh, narrow cavity. Removing the thick vomer. One third of it is being removed. Backbiting forceps come handy to remove this part of the bone. And this gives a nice view into the nasopharynx in a rectangular form. The debrider was used to cut away the ragged mucosal edges. This is the back biting in action. The loose bone chips were removed with the help of a curate.
and finally with the Tilly's forceps. Final view before we applied the stent. It was a 3.5 millimeter endotracheal tube which was trimmed to size, placed in both the nostrils and into the coana, bypassing the coana but it was not touching the posterior nasopharyngeal wall. You can see the soft palate below. This is the tube, the airway were given sideways. Introduced into one nostril. You can see how it has bypassed the coana. The tube was kept for three to four weeks. In this case, we kept it for three weeks and then removed. Thank you.